You are joining Making a Difference with Melissa Clark, a show that shares the compelling stories and voices of well-known and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Enjoy our guests. Call in or just listen to be inspired. For this show was made with you in mind. Please join us every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with our special guests. And you can listen to our recast at www.melissaclarkshow.com. Hi, thank you so much for joining us here on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. Our show has come a long way since we started early last year, and we were honored to have Alex Shoemaker be a guest on our show around this time. A Journey CD would inspire a five-year-old little boy want to bang to the music, and since then, he has become an internet sensation with millions of viewers. Take a look. Alex, we are so thrilled to have you on again. You're going to be 15 on the 16th. I'm going to be 41 ah! <laughs> on May 10th. <laughs> but I wanted to have you on. Happy soon birthday. So nice to see you again. Thank How you. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, letting me back on here. It was a blast last time. Yeah, we had such a great time. Your parents are amazing. How have you been this whole year, Alex? Uh, I've been doing pretty well, you know just bored, but I've kept myself really busy, uh, ready to get back out of the house this summer because I think things are starting to get back on track. Yes. Uh, it looks good. So just been writing songs, uh, playing a lot of drums and playing some gigs here now since summer's starting to kick back up. So it's really nice playing a lot of guitar. Uh, I learned a lot of acoustic guitar over the expansion of last quarantine. So that's helped me writing a lot of songs. So uh, I can't wait for everybody to hear those. Uh, how did you handle the pandemic um, as a teenage boy um at first I was kind of like you know at first I was like you know this only may last for a while but I feel like in a way as a musician it was a blessing in a mm -hmm. way because that is like unlimited practice time that we all got you know like I said I picked up an acoustic guitar and finally just sat down and learned everything that you need well not everything but I learned you know the main the main things about it and I just be stuff that I didn't know before because I had played in so long. And uh, I just think it was a true blessing that we, like musicians, got the quarantine. But after a while, I think, you know, it it all messes up a little, us up in the head a little bit. So uh, now I think we're all ready to get back out there. But before it was, it was fine, but now it's kind of getting annoying. But we got to do what we got to do to be safe. So I'm fine yeah, with that. Of course, of course. So you learned what you had to learn and now you're ready to show your skills. So Will you go yeah. ahead and show some skills for us? And we thank you so much. Uh, follow uh, Alex on YouTube. Yeah, Alex Shoemaker, Alex Shoe Drums on Instagram and Alex Shoe Drums on Twitter. Alex Shoemaker. Alex Shoemaker Drum on Twitter and Alex Shoemaker on Facebook. Beautiful. We were so happy to have you. Have a happy birthday. Thank you. Introducing supermodel and author Carol Alt. Hi, thank you so much for joining us here on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. We teamed up with Foodie TV for this segment. We are here with the talented, beautiful, and kind international supermodel, Carol Alt. She's been on the cover of magazines 700 times. Carol, that is amazing. She's an entrepreneur, an actress, a host of her own show, Carol Alt's Living Room, an author, and a raw food enthusiast. We thank you so much, Carol, for joining us on Making a Difference and making a difference in this world with your raw food living. How are you today? Hey, Melissa. Thanks for having me on your show. Thank you so much. I've had the pleasure of meeting you several times before this, and I kept up with your social media. So I just want to let you know that I have this top on, a pair of sweatpants on, and high heels in your honor. <laughs> <laughs> what is that about, Carol? Are you selling shoes? Oh, you know, I just love shoes. I mean, I must have a collection of over two or 300 pairs of shoes and I can't throw a pair out. Mm -hmm. So even when they kind of fall out of 
style for a bit. I put them up in an archive. I love it. So I, yeah, actually, I just can't throw a pair away. <laughs> I feel very sexy with these heels on right now. I'm going to, you know, I haven't worn them in so long because of the pandemic. We haven't been to any events. So I'm just, uh, I'm enjoying this right now. Uh, do you have any like weird people, like foot fetishes people? Because they must I got love all kinds of people. I got shoe people who like them. I got fashion people who follow. Yeah. You know, they just like the fashions because I do wear you know, fashionable clothing as well. Yes. And the stories that I do are really cute. If you notice each video, each 30 to 60 second video is a complete story. Yes. It, you know, so there's certain things when my, when my media team at Why Not You Media come and they shoot me, every time it's, what's the story? Yeah. And then I choose the shoe and the outfit to match the story. They're like it's mini not movies. the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. It's like doing a movie. You know, I style it. I do my hair and makeup. We, you know, we run ideas past each other. And, you know, it's so much easier because for 10 years I was doing them by myself. Yeah. And it kind of grew because it started, the way this started was I was on vacation and somebody wrote on Twitter and said, what shoes are you wearing? You know, you're in the, you're at the beach. What shoes do you wear at the beach? And yeah. so... I kind of went into my closet, pulled a pair of shoes. There were mirrors everywhere and I shot a photo and I posted it and people were like, oh, we love these shoes, we love these shoes. And I'm like, oh, people like shoes. So I started posting shoes. And then I was up at my agent, mm -hmm. my modeling agent, and I said, hey, you know, I didn't post my shoe photo today. Would you take a photo for me? So it was just, I was wearing a pair of jeans with these beautiful pair of Dolce Cabana white with a blue piping and i was i thought i was posing for her taking photos yeah but when i went to post it i'm like oh my gosh patty you shot a video i'm like what do i do here i said oh, i'll just post the video because we're running to lunch so i posted the video and people went nuts but then i thought like that's kind of boring it's just my my leg from the knee down with the shoe on it i'm like i'm sure people want to know it's me and you know I think I should do some kind of fun ideas. So in this metamorphosis from, hey, what are you wearing shoe-wise at the beach to, you know, these, these little shoe vignettes. I love it. You are absolutely gorgeous. Your legs look amazing. And you say that you put olive oil you, on, your, on your whole body. Does that, do you really see a difference? As, do you feel much better at this age as opposed to 20? Well, first of all, the thing when I was 20, yeah. I was constantly starving to lose weight. I was never eating. And it was so difficult because I would be working and people would be eating and I'd be on the set and I'd be wanting to eat, but I didn't want to eat because, hey, they couldn't zip up that dress that day. I had no concept of what was important to eat, what wasn't important to eat, what made you fat, what didn't make you fat, what nutrition the body, what did it. I, I was just like floating a, like a leaf on the water, just listening to all the BS out there about what's so good about this diet, that diet. I mean, I tried everything. I, I tried this diet where you ate only fruit. And in the middle of winter, I was eating frozen blueberries because I couldn't get blueberries. I this is back in the day. Now you can get anything at any time. But I was like throwing these up because it was, it was so disgusting to have them. And all I was eating for day after day after day was fruit, which is all just sugar. It doesn't even support the system. Mm. You know, I was living on eight cups of coffee a day. So at 20, yeah, because it was filling and it gave you energy because it's, you know, you gave you adrenal energy. It was kicking the heck out of my adrenals, which coffee does. And it was making me extremely acid and my stomach acid, you know. So once I learned how to eat raw, this was like nirvana for me. This was nirvana. I could eat and I knew what to eat and I knew when to eat it and I could anti-age and I could keep my weight and I could keep my energy and more important because I fell into a deep pit of ill health yeah. that I had to claw my way out of. More importantly, eating correctly, eating clean food, Throwing raw in there, it, you, don't, you don't have to be 100% raw. Anybody who tells you they're 100% anything is the only 100% lying. You know? Yeah. The truth is, I'm not 100% raw. I go to a hockey game to watch Alexei play. I was eating popcorn. Mm -hmm. And people come to me, aren't you raw anymore? 
course I am. What difference does it make? You can't fall off raw. Right. You don't eat raw at this meal. You eat raw at the next meal. Like, what the heck? What's the difference? Like, the, the pressure was off. And I could, I could, you know, if I wasn't feeling good and my stomach felt this way, I knew what to eat to, like, calm that down so that I didn't have heartburn. I mean, I lived on heartburn medication, uh, aspirin, NyQuil to fall asleep, coffee to wake up. Wow. You know, I mean, I'm not bashing NyQuil because, of, but I wasn't using it for colds. Probably I was sure. Yeah. I was off labeling it. And, you know, I, you know, and antibiotics, which really destroyed my, you know, inner biome. So I was really, by the time I learned the correct and dug my way out of this hole so that I could manage. And by the way, we're all managing our health always. If anybody thinks they're healthy, they're fooling themselves, especially in this day and age with 5G hitting our bodies with electrical impulses. We're yeah. all electric. So, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm going, nobody's healthy. It's just a matter of when you find out you're not. So why take that chance? Yeah. Just eat healthy, manage your own health, take responsibility for your own health. And by the way, the side effects are amazing. Vitality, mm. energy, people are drawn to you. It anti-ages you. I mean, that's why my mother started eating healthy. She looked at me and she said, what did you do? You started to look mortal and now you're looking amazing again. Like, what did you do? I said, I changed my diet. It makes all the difference in the world. I totally believe that. And then Carol has four recipe books um, on a raw diet food. And I saw that you're a doctorate in alternative health studies. Well, it's an honorary doctorate, but yeah, I mean, it's okay. the, yeah, they were very kind, you know, in alternative health. Yeah. I mean, come on. I've studied with the best doctors in the world, in, all, in the alternative world. I'm never not studying. You know, I just don't want to be, you know, a doctor who's responsible, you know, directly responsible for someone else's life. I don't know if I can handle that, sure. but to help guide people to say, listen, do a little bit more of this and help yourself and feel better. You know, eat cleaner food. Don't eat packaged stuff whenever you can. Be careful when you go out to eat that you're not eating rancid salad dressing because they give you the bad oil because the good oil, you know, these little tips, that's what I live for. Mm. So how, tell us the benefits of uh, eating raw food and how can our bodies digest it? Okay, well, first of all, not everybody needs lots and lots of raw food. We just need very clean food. I, my metabolic type is I need as much raw food as possible because I'm a very A-type personality. I'm very acidic. I'm, you know, I'm constantly punching my adrenals and the adrenals are kicking out cortisone and cortisol and, and, and adrenaline and that's all acid on the body. And what diseases I had, what illnesses I had, you know, like stomach and headache, these are all inflammatory issues. So mm -hmm. I already knew for me, that I really needed to alkaline out my diet and I needed to eat things that nutrition the body. So when I went raw, the things that I was looking for was raw food is alkaline as opposed to cooked food, which is acid. So I was looking to alkaline out my body. I mean, let's face it, let's take a piece of wood and throw it in the fireplace. Mm. That, you know, the heat chemically changes the properties of the wood from a piece of wood to an ash. It does the same thing with food. What it does is it not only changes the pH, but it breaks down these heat sensitive, the heat sensitive relationship, the, 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 uh, you know, the connections between vitamins and minerals. Every woman knows you can't take calcium with vit without vitamin D and magnesium. You can't absorb it. Calcium on itself doesn't absorb in the body. The body recognizes calcium with vitamin D and magnesium. That's why if you see something that says, you know, calcium on it, it says vitamin D and magnesium, mm. you know? So, and that's why. So when these bonds break down between the vitamins and minerals due to heat, the body absorbs less. Interesting. So, you know, if I'm eating something, I want to get the most nutrition out of it that I possibly can. That's me. But when you're also eating something cooked, if it's cooked over 115 degrees, now 115 degrees is hot. Right. So <clears throat> don't get me wrong. There are things like I can have a soup you know, I can make a soup in my blender and blend it up to 115 degrees. So I'll have a warm soup, right. you know, and then I'll throw olive oil into it. So I have oils to burn off. And that's what makes you warm. 
yeah. you know, is, is this ability to take in cold pressed oils and burn it off. So if you understand that 115 degrees is kind of like the outside envelope for most raw foods, um, where the, where it starts to break down and where enzymes start to die, mm. then I want food that has enzymes in it that are living foods. I'm a living being, I want living foods. And enzymes are really important because if it's not in the food, I have to make it. And right. if I'm making it, I'm pulling from my body nutrition that should be used for my skin, hair, and nails. I'm using that to make you know, enzymes to digest food that is dead, that I'm not getting any more absorption out of because the bonds are broken down. Do you see how this works? If yeah, you're... Like, you're reminding me of my father. My father used to make uh, spinach. You know, you, you boil it in water. And he used to drink the water, drink too. The water. And I'd be like, Daddy, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I just cooked all the, vi the vitamins out of it. <laughs> so that makes yeah, perfect. I mean, more or less, more or less, he's right. You know, yeah. he was, but what he did was he broke the bonds between the vitamins and minerals. So it wasn't recognized as the, by the body as the nutrition that it should be. The right. body was taking in what it could. The other problem that we spoke about already, molecular structure. And when the molecular structure changes, the body goes, huh, what is this? Mm. You know, it kind of looks like a fat, but you know, it's all, it's all like weird. So it takes in a truckload of fat. Let's say you eat French fries and you've got all this cooked fat. Yeah. Now you take in these French fries and you get a truckload of, of fat components mm -hmm. and the body goes, huh, all right, need enzymes. It makes enzymes. It breaks down the fat. It goes, oh, I recognize these pieces. And it puts together the pieces that it can. And yeah. it says, oh, that's fat. Then it has to make enzymes again to break down those pieces so that it could utilize it. Now you've taken in a truckload of fat and you've made a Volkswagen full that you can use. Right, right. And twice had to make enzymes to break it down. This is the way it was explained to me. Yeah. So that made sense to me. It, it, it just made sense. And even if it's wrong, if it's anything like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want to be digesting things twice to get this much and then have to store the rest of that in my butt. Right. <laughs> so are there any people out there who cannot eat raw food? What yes. kind of people can eat raw food? People who have alkaline diseases, mm. you know, but you know, that's why I always say to everybody, you need to go to a doctor to find out what you are. Right. I mean, I, I just went yesterday to get my metabolic type again, because, mm. you know, if you're working really hard and you're this metabolic type and you're working towards, you know, going to the middle, you want to make sure you don't swing to the way other side. Because right. there's, there's basically three types. There's parasympathetic, sympathetic, and there's balanced. Now, you know, and this was the Dr. Gonzalez protocol. It was based on basically three types of people. Sympathetic, like myself, mm -hmm. raw food. Mm -hmm. As much as you can, not 100%, but as much, you know, you need to eat predominantly. Right. Then there was balanced. They're the lucky ones. They can eat cooked, they can eat raw, they need a balance of everything. Yeah. And then there's the parasympathetic. And that's like my ex-boyfriend, Alexei. Alexa, or my common law husband, whatever you want to call him, ex-boyfriend, common law husband. Um, <laughs> you know, you had a certain amount of years and hey. <laughs> yeah, I think after seven years, you're a uh, common law. I'm like going on 22. <laughs> anyway, he's really kind of like to do to do. Yeah. You know, when he's on the ice, he expends all that energy. But when he's off the ice, like I'm running, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're, we're late, we're late. Ready. He's like, do, 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 do. Do, do, and I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, you know, and that's the two different types. So I'm sympathetic dominant. He's parasympathetic dominant. Yeah. So he could eat cooked meat and, you know, cooked vegetables. And he wanted to swing towards, like, we're both aiming to be towards the middle. And that's basically what, what, um, you know, Dr. Gonzalez, Nicholas Gonzalez found out in his protocol was that you needed to bring people towards the middle so they could balance themselves. A balanced body is a healthy body. Yeah. Do you ever see, what are those doctors called? An endocrine, what do you call those? An endo endocrinologist. Endocrinologist. Do you, did you see one? Do you recommend it? You know, I've talked, I've talked to many and, you know, it's funny because I'm, I, I found this new doctor who, you know, I really, really like, and he, want, he wanted to do all the metabolic tests, 
you know, make sure that the food I'm eating is the right food. You know, he, he wanted to start with his own tests and work from there, which I really appreciated because a lot of people, they just take what you got. And, you know, it's coming through this brain. I'm yeah. not a doctor. Right. I'm telling you, oh, like, oh, well, I think this and I felt that. And no, he's taking all the proper tests so that I know exactly what I am. And one of the tests I asked him to take because nobody's ever done it with me mm. was, you know, for adrenals and endocrinology. So mm. I think it's important to know. You need to know what you need to shore up because you don't want a brick falling on your head one day. What you want to do is know and keep balanced and keep eating healthy and doing all the right things for the body. And that's what I tell everybody. You need to see somebody who can help you do this. Yeah. You know, you always have to have somebody in your life who's telling you, because left to our own devices, <laughs> it's I know true. left to my own devices. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, my physician always recommends for me to go and see an, an uh, endo. And uh, I would like to go and see one because we all have difficult, different chemicals in our body and what we're putting in. Maybe I'm drinking purified water and that's not good for me. Maybe I should be drinking mineral water or maybe the red wine that I'm drinking is not good. Well, you know, but... Uh... <laughs> no, no, it's true. What happens if you're a very alkaline body and you're drinking alkaline water. Sure. You might not need alkaline water. Maybe what you need is a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm going to call know, up that doctor soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's always good to have the information. Yeah. You know, get the information about you so you can make decisions about you. And when a doctor makes, you know, might be making a decision that you don't feel is right, at least come from a position of strength and education. Yeah. I was, um, you know, I'm going to hit 41 this year and I'm glad that you're on this program and we thank you so much because I'm like in the middle of making changes. I'm re-renovating my house. I'm, you know, going in this crazy mode. So, and, and my diet, I would like to change. So thank you for being a part of us. Cause I know that at 35, you started doing this. Is that yes, right? My mother, my mother was 68 when she started. Interesting. So, and my, my, you know, my, my one sister, she dabbled for a little bit and then she gets, then she got heavily into it. In fact, in one of my books, I think she gave me a third of the recipes because she's, she likes cooking and she's a chef. And she's like, I was so afraid that doing raw food was going to take away my ability to be a chef. I'm like, why? On my Instagram last week, I did a chocolate, chocolate chip cookie. I, saw I mean, that. there's so much stuff you can do when you think outside of, oh, white yeah. flour and sugar. Well, there are, aren't there restaurants in New York City, just raw, raw restaurants? <laughs> are there well, any? With COVID, with COVID I'm, I'm not even quite sure what's open. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a beautiful, on YouTube, I saw the truth about cancer. Uh, Carol did a nice speaking and she told you exactly what she went through. So at the age of uh, 35, you know, it's a beautiful model. She looks gorgeous on the outside and she feels like crapola on the inside, you know? Crapola, so, yeah, that's my word. <laughs> crapola, you know? So <laughs> tell us how you felt after, like when you wake up, like right today, when you wake up, how are you feeling as opposed to that 35 year old girl? So, you know, what happened when I was 35 is I went on, I went on a trip for mm. Carol Alt and Friends in the Rainforest. And I arrived there for a two-day shoot. And, you know, they were bringing other girls in, but my two days was supposed to be there. And there was a 22-year-old girl there. And I was watching her jump around and feel so good in her skin. And I had arrived the night before and I fit all the bathing suits. But then that day, for some reason, I bloated up. And I was literally hiding behind trees and rocks. So there was a wide berth of people around me. Nobody was like really approaching me. And when you're not feeling good and your body isn't nutrition and your body isn't happy, it's putting out a vibe, yeah. whether you know it or not. Yes. And this girl was jumping all over the set and all the guys were like, do you want coffee? Do you want this? Do you want water? And I'm sitting there like, what the heck am I, chopped liver? And I'm watching this. Now, I wasn't angry. And the girl, to me, wasn't like a beautiful girl, but she had this energy and happiness in her body, and she was comfortable. And I was like, huh, what happened that I went from that to this? That's what started this. And I got back to Los Angeles, and I was super depressed. And, you know, to get up in the morning, I would have to have, you know, sugar and coffee. 
So whether it was scotch in my coffee, which, you know, one shot is just the same as eating white pizza bread or eating right. a croissant or eating a bran muffin. Sugar is sugar. Right. Your liver doesn't know the difference. It's just all sugar. So, you know, I was doing this to get out of bed in the morning just to feel like normal. And I thought, you know, this isn't right. And I don't feel good and I'm depressed and I don't look good. And I'm starting to get like wrinkles and, you know, gray hair. And, you know, I can't keep my weight anymore. Like I'm battling every day, eating less and less. I'm eating practically nothing a day. Mm. And a friend of mine called me and said, you need to speak with this amazing doctor. It was Dr. Timothy Brantley. He wrote the New York Times bestseller. It was on the New York Times bestselling list for 15 weeks. Mm. It was called The Cure. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Bray, I went, I was, he was my guru for months. I followed him everywhere. I watched him, you know, do everything. He, he taught me, he, he explained things to me in such a way that I got it. It was like I plugged into the universe. I got what he was saying. Love that. And Love that. And not only did I get it, but I was able to utilize it. And I thought, this is amazing. And in homage to him, uh, you know, my first couple of books, I, I, I dedicated to him. Dr. Gonzalez wrote the forward, but I dedicated it to Timothy because he's, the, you know, in, in my book, he's, he's this brilliant person who completely turned my life around. Mm -hmm. Now I get up in the morning. It's like I'm, a, I'm an electric golf cart. If I go, I go. If I take my foot off the gas, I can relax. And that's the way you should be. Yeah. You shouldn't be like, I can't sleep. I'm, I'm just like thinking all the time and I'm nervous all the time. And it, it, that shouldn't be the way. And you shouldn't be the other way either. You shouldn't be like, oh, I just don't feel like doing anything. I got no energy. Like, ugh. you need to be in the middle of the road. And that's what he did for me. And I'm forever, forever grateful because it also saved my life. But I've been forever grateful to him. So you weren't really worried with COVID, you know, your immunity being down or, you know, were you I mean, worried? Not really. I'm, mm. I'm also protecting myself against 5G, which, you know, can attack the immune system. In my book, that's the way I think. Mm. Um, but, you know, I'm not crazy either. I don't go out without a mask. I'm right. not, you know, kicking the goads. I'm, I'm saying, you know, yeah, I understand that there's, an, a, you know, a really bad immunity issue going on. Right. And that's right. why something that's been around forever is able to get a foothold. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we, we need to follow the politicians on many of this, you know, we need, we need masks, but you know, I'm, I, I'm not shutting my life down because of it. Yeah. Meaning like you're, um, you're eating very healthy. So you're keeping your immunity up, you know, as opposed right, to somebody that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Somebody sitting there and eating nachos all day and you know, your immunity is going to be down. Right. And, so. And, and don't get me wrong, I fell into that during COVID. Yeah. I fell into that. I, I was eating bad food because there was a point where I couldn't get food. Mm. And there was a line around the corner at, at the supermarket and you couldn't get in. By the time you got in there, everything was gone. So, I mean, I, I, there was a moment, you know, but I stayed on my supplements to make sure that I was yeah. getting nutrition. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not being ridiculous just because I believe that, you know, we can, you know, help the body with nutrition. I'm saying it's one of the things we need to fight against COVID. Yeah. It's definitely one of the things we need to nutrition, not just against COVID, against anything, against our own internal diseases. We need to always, always, always. And I know with COVID people are like, I'm so bored. Like, I just need to do this. I need to yeah. do that. You know, and I'm like, yeah, but don't let your immune system suffer for it because that's a long-term issue. How, do you, how are you staying away from 5G? I know Fran Drescher, I've interviewed her several times and she's, um, she's not into 5G as well. So tell us, it's, it's a radiation that comes off of our electronics. Well, it's, a, it's an electromagnetic impulse. Mm. And it, you know, it, it comes off of 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G, but they're just different impulses. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't done really enough studying Yeah. Um, because it's kind of fairly new. I mean, it's been around maybe two years. I think, I think I've had it in my, in my apartment for a little over two years. Mm. Um, 
you know, but you could sit in your bed and open your phone up and take a look and see all the Wi-Fi's that are hitting your bed. Yes. So I put an EMF tent over my bed and I sleep under static hot sheets. Now my cats don't leave the tent. They leave the tent to eat and poop and they're mm -hmm. back in the tent. If I want to know where the cats are, they're sleeping under the tent. Wow. They know. That's interesting. They can feel it. Yeah. Let's get into your cats. I'm a huge animal lover. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, rescue no, no. animals. I know. You have two beautiful cats, right? Two, what's their names? Sammy and Joey, or Sam, Sam and Jojo. Love it so much. And she, Carol actually funded a small animal rescue organization. She saves older, abused, and stray animals from death row. Uh, it's called sheltersheek.org. Wait, actually, Shelter Chic morphed into Denise's Rescue Washington Heights. Okay. I'll get the information yes. on that, and I'll put that on our website. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. Denise, Denise is an amazing, amazing woman. Yeah. She's got 20 cats in her apartment. She's got 40 in her basement, and every three or four weeks, she places 20 or 30 cats, but she gets 20 or 30 cats more. The other day, she found a beautiful pit bull, pit bull puppy tied to a stake under the George Washington Bridge. I can't even, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't handle it. I don't understand. There's so many places for these people to bring animals. Why would you starve to death a dog under the George Washington Bridge thinking nobody's going to go in there and find it? How do you walk away from an animal who's looking at you going like, wait, wait, where are you going, mommy? Like, how do you do that? I don't know. I, I let's be happy. We don't have that inside of us. We're, well, I, I raise money for her. I donate money every year to her. Thank you. She uses everything, everything for these animals. She doesn't turn an animal away. She will, even during COVID, when we had so much trouble getting food, because, you know, during COVID, they would bring food to the supermarket. I mean, before COVID. If you got a broken bag, you'd bring it back to the supermarket. They'd give you a new bag, and they would take this bag, and then they would donate that to charities. Yeah. But when there was no taking product back, we lost our ability to get food. Yeah. So I literally was buying food. When, when my birthday came, I just said to friends, you want, you love me, send a hundred bucks worth of food to my charity. That's awesome. That's very my nice. My friend was going to, I was just going to say, my throne was going to throw me this great birthday party at Cipriani's. I'm like, you know, I, I'm 60 plus now, so it's not so much fun, but I would really love you to just donate that money to my charity. If you love me, that's what I'm asking you to do. I actually had some, somebody say to me, well, I don't like animals. I'm like, you don't have to like animals. But if you want to make me happy, yeah. like why are you giving me this when I could care less about this material thing? Donate to my animals. Give me a gift I want. Don't give me a gift because you want to give it to me. How can you not like animals? So how has animals saved your life? How did uh, J uh, Joey and Sammy save your life? Well, you know how they say, I saved my cat's life and then yeah. he saved mine? When you're locked down and you're alone, and, and, and I am alone, Alexei has been locked in Russia, so I haven't been able to see him for wow. over a year and a half. Wow. So these cats, they make me laugh. They make me mad. They make me chase them. Sammy always wants to walk outside in the garden. Yeah. He actually made me healthier because I was walking in the garden without my shoes on, which was really great to connect to the magnetic earth again. And it, it helped with my health. So, you know, I open the windows and they walk out on the ledges and we have awnings right below my ledges all the way around the building so they can't fall very far. You know, when, when Joey looks at me with that one eye and, and talks to me, because she talks all the time, I say, Jojo, meow. You know, Is she blind they, in one eye? Yeah, I don't know what mm. somebody did to her, but that's why I had to have her. Mm. I saw that little face and that poor little eye, and I thought, this cat needs a good life, you know? And she just, I just love her so much because mm. she was able to come from that to love a person again. So some person hurt her and she was able to get over. It took a while and a lot of patience. I mean, six, eight months of patience, wow. but she, you know, she comes when I call her, she follows me around the house. She talks to me all the time. 
and I never felt alone. And I think that's so important during COVID. I so appreciate what Denise does. And when it was Shelter Chic and I was working with Brittany, I, I so appreciate because people are so rotten to animals because they can be. Yeah. You know, and these girls, they, they put themselves out there to be traumatized and emotionally abused to rescue these animals and take them in. Yeah. I'm able to financially help and I'm able to get my friends to financially help. God bless. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to, they don't want to help animals. So they give me, you know, I went all the way to Long Island to do this interview one time. And they said, well, donate to your cat rescue. And then they decided, well, we'll give you a hundred dollars because you know, they're not a 501c3. I don't care. You promised me yeah. to donate. Now you're making a decision because they've, they're having trouble getting a 501c3. And this is the most legitimate freaking charity because 100% of the money goes to the animals. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a shame. You, you know, because of red tape, you know, she lost out on, you know, a thousand dollar donation. Yeah. So... You know, I, I, I don't, I have a hard time with people because they're, they're never saying the truth and, and they're yeah. always going back on their word, as, especially after you perform. And I'm like, you know what? I don't need this anymore in my life. Animals always, they always perform. They always give you, always. And there's not much you have to do for them. You need to feed them and keep them clean and love them. And that's it. Yeah. Why I only have two people in my life. <laughs> And just my animals. I'm fine with that. I think as we get older, we, we figure that one out. Um, I think how, we do. Yeah. I did. Of course. Uh, how old are uh, Sammy and Joey? Well, I got them. They were each two. Mm. So they're about seven now. Oh. Like time goes so fast. Like, yeah, I think they're about seven or eight. Like I got Sammy on the 4th of July from the North Shore Animal Shelter. And mm. it, was, it was the 1776 day. If you, if you paid $17.76, you could adopt an animal. So it was perfect. Sweet. I gave them 20 bucks plus $500 donation because they <laughs> did such a good job with him. Yeah. No, and they told me what he was like when they got him, full of mites, puking and pooping because he was so scared. Yeah. And that they had him for five months. I gave them the money. I said, you know, thank you so much because... When they put him in his, my arms and he looked up at me with his big, big eyes and he started to purr, I was like, oh my God, like you did an amazing job with this animal. Yeah, we have to do more for animals, uh, be the voice of them. They're the voiceless. So thank you so much. Carol. Around the world. Yeah, everywhere. Trapping them and cutting their, I can't even, I can't even, it makes me too upset. We have a segment coming up, uh, bringing awareness to dog fighting. So there's- Oh, a new, please there's, don't even- I know. It's an animated uh. film, but, uh, but we're going to bring life to that because people need to help. They need to stop this. Uh, you know, there's other ways of making money. Next yes. topic. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Take us down. Don't, don't bring me down. I don't want to bring you down. Uh, but I would like to bring, in a, bring, bring something to everybody's attention. I was doing my research on you yesterday and all oh. your, yeah, all your uh, YouTube, I everything. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Gorgeous woman. I wanted to talk about the time you were on a uh, Howard Stern show with Fred Norris. Um, and I love the Howard Stern show. Jackie is, is a family friend. I love him so much. So I was uh, a little upset and, uh, you know, uh, the way Fred was speaking with you and decrediting, decrediting all of your hard work that you've done throughout the years. So my question to you is as a woman, as a supermodel, as an author, how did you handle that? Which I think you handled very well, but you can see it in your face. You know, I, I, I saw it in your face. It, it hurts when somebody says that to you. Um, it didn't hurt me. It didn't hurt you. How no. did you, how did you handle it and how did you feel inside and what advice would you give to someone who is publicly uh, uh, embarrassing somebody, please? You know, I always find that all negative things come from fear mm. and people try to gain control always. So, you know, that said, I don't look to Fred to validate me. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't. I was just like, you know, it was just so, like, I was trying to figure out if, is this guy kidding? 
like you invite a guest to your show and you you start attacking them and putting them down like i just thought i hadn't merited that but he's totally totally entitled to his opinion yeah you know don't get me wrong he's a you know fred is entitled to his opinion mm. and i can't stop him from from saying his opinion and i wouldn't stop somebody you know i mean the hardest part about people people's opinion is when you disagree with them yeah so you know he's he's totally entitled to his opinion and whether or not he was using that to hurt me it didn't hurt me because like i said my validation who i am had nothing to do with fred norris or his opinion but at the same time you're going to get always diverse opinions from everybody and you can't put too much weight on any one particular person who is nasty and angry and negative and scared and trying to control you by by verbally abusing you you know i always found truthfully laughing in somebody's face you know like i laughed at fred i'm like fred you're entitled to your opinion you know when somebody's putting you down showing them that this isn't hurting you was my best defense but then again i wasn't in a situation where somebody would if if they weren't able to control me would physically attack me sure I mean, you have to judge every situation yourself, but someone who is a coward who's using words to try to hurt you, words don't hurt you. It's like, what do you care? Yeah. Like, as long as you understand that that person, that little person is trying to belittle you to make you even to them, then you understand you're a bigger person. Yeah. And that's where I came from. I was like, why? Why would he invite a guest? Like I thought he was kidding at first. I thought he was trying to see a joke. I thought it was part of the program. I didn't. Yeah, know. I thought it was part. You know that he and Howard were going to fight over this, and then he was going to relent at the end. And you know when he did, I was like, you know, Fred. Like seriously, I've said this throughout the last fifteen years. I think it was like fifteen years ago. I like, and he said it many times, and he keeps saying it. I'm like, you're entitled to your opinion. Thank God everybody doesn't share his opinion. I certainly don't share his opinion, but. It's his opinion, and the more power you give to it, in any situation, the more power you give to someone, the more you let your power go because it's upsetting you, yeah. Or you think they're right, or whatever, you know. The more power they have, and True. they won't stop. Right. It happens on a daily basis. Social media, you know, with our peers, our workers, our family, and they they say absolutely. They, and I apologize for my French, uh, my, my, my friend Louis from Brooklyn, he always goes, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? yes but until you understand what that means in relation to you. Yeah. You know, when, when somebody is attacking you, you got to realize, so that's their opinion. Yeah. Walk, walk away because the more you engage, the more power you give them. Well, I think you're fantastic and gorgeous and beautiful, and you're going to be cooking for us. See, that's the kind of opinion I can get behind. <laughs> I think you're wonderful, and I, I don't think you deserve that, but it is what it is. It's, it's, it is what it is. It is and everybody, what it is. You know, the best part about all that is that every time I ran into anybody on the street, they would scream, Fred Norris, you know. <laughs> Did he ever apologize? You are a supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever apologize to you, Carol? I never asked for an apology. Okay. And I, I don't, I don't care what his, he's entitled to his opinion. Yeah. He's entitled. I'm, I'm never going to ask for an apology. How do you, how do you ask someone to apologize for their opinion? Well, no, I thought maybe he would offer one. I don't know. No, no. I would never ask him. I would never really accept one. Like yeah. you're entitled to your opinion. He's entitled to his opinion. And you know, millions of viewers have proven him wrong but yeah he's yeah. still entitled to his opinion and they let me know you know his, howard's viewers are very verbal and very you know extroverted and they you know they tell me they i mean still to this day i get on twitter and instagram at model carol walt thank you <laughs> <That's> right, <laughs> i yes. guess head over to yeah. her instagram <laughs> yeah model carol walt everybody um, follow know. her <laughs> i get people who write me and say just so you know Fred Norris is a blank blank. And I'm like, you know, Fred's, I still say that Fred's entitled to his opinion, but yeah. I really appreciate your opinion. 
Yeah, absolutely. Enough yeah. with Fred. Fred, we still love you. Don't worry. We still love the Howard Stern yeah, show. you know, it's no <laughs> more feelings. Let's start cooking. Making a Difference is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Please visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today and subscribe. Subscribe.